In this video, we're taking a look at how to combine all the transformations that we've learned. That includes translations, reflections, and stretches. So these multiple transformations can be applied to a function using this general transformation model uh, that I'm going to show you. So I'm going to use the letters um, that we've been working on with translations, reflections, and stretches, um, and combining them together. So the first one is y minus k equals a times f of b and then in brackets x minus h close bracket and then close the square brackets now we can take the minus k and add it to the right side so that just gives us a little bit of slightly different a little bit of a formula change So we have plus k instead. So if we recall, um, a, the number that multiplies by the function that's in the front, results in a vertical stretch of y equals f of x by a factor of a. And I'm going to put a in absolute um, to say we're ignoring the negative sign right now. Now, if a is negative, then we're going to say that the ref function is reflected in the x-axis. The b that's inside the brackets, um, that's after the f, results in a horizontal stretch. Of y equals f of x by a factor of 1 over b, as you recall. And again, I'm going to put absolute values here to not talk about the um, the negative sign because we're going to talk about that separately so that if b is less than zero then the function is also reflected in the y-axis okay so h um, that's the next letter here that you can see on the right side and that's subtracted um, from the x and it's still inside the big square brackets so the h determines the horizontal translation And then if h is positive, the graph is going to be translated to the right. And if h is negative, remember when we put a negative, it's going to actually become positive. Um, the sign will become positive, but we still know that h was negative. And it's going to be translated to the left. k determines the vertical translation. And if k is a positive number, the graph is going to be translated up. And if k is less than 0, the graph is going to be translated down. Now, really, really important to note is that we always do the stretches and the reflections before we do the translation. So always make sure that you apply a and b first before you apply h and k. So stretches and reflections occur before the translations. So if I combine all of those letters into a mapping notation, we would have x divided by b plus h, and then a times y plus k. So let's take a look at a couple of examples um, to see how we apply these transformations. So describe how the graph um, can be obtained from the original graph, which is just simply y equals f of x. And then we're going to sketch the graph. So here is the original graph here. We can see it looks like um, a square root. And I'm going to take a look at this function. We want to take our square root function, and we're going to have here a vertical expansion by 2 and then negative 3 which is not inside the bracket so it's outside that is also going to be vertical and this will be a vertical translation and this will be down 3 because of the negative sign now if I actually want to show you what the mapping notation looks like 
So my original points would be x, y. Then my new points would be x, because nothing affects the x value because they're both vertical. And then we're going to have 2y, and then we're going to subtract 3. Now to make this even clearer, I'm going to put, I'm going to choose points from my original graph. So I have 0, 0. I'm going to choose 1, 1. And there's a point at 4, 2. And also 9, 3. So I'm going to create a table with those four points. And then I'm going to apply my mapping notation. So for, in my mapping notation, the x all stay the same. So I'm going to redraw my table where the x is all the same. So 0, 1, 4, and 9. But I need to take my y values and put it through this little expression here. So I need to take my y values, multiply it by 2, and then subtract 3. And when I do this, I get negative 3, negative 1, 1, and 3. So now I'm going to plot my new points. So I have 0, negative 3, 1, negative 1, 4, 1, and 9, 3, which happens to be the same point. And I'm going to connect them in a nice smooth curve. And then that will give me my new function. In the second example, it's a little bit different because now everything's inside the brackets. So we know that's going to affect the horizontal. Now, really important, if we remember how we wrote the um, transformation model before, if I look back up here, we noticed that there were square brackets with a number or letter, and then there were the round brackets. So right in front of X, we had to have that bracket there. So what I have to do for this question here is I need to factor out that half before I determine what my translation is. So here, I need to rewrite this as F bracket. I'm going to factor out a half so that it opens up another bracket, X minus. And when I factor out a half, Think of it as dividing. So I'm going to take 2 divided by a half, and this gives me 4. Okay, so from here I can see that I have a horizontal expansion by 2, because remember I have to take the reciprocal, and here I have a horizontal translation for right or right for. So in terms of the mapping notation, if my original was x and y, my new points would be, so nothing this time happens to the y, but there's a horizontal expansion by 2. So I'm going to go 2 times x, and it's moving 4 to the right. So 4 to the right means I'm adding 4 because it's moving in the right direction. So it's going to be plus 4. Nothing's happening with a y because there's no other numbers that affect my vertical direction. So I'm going to just write y. So I'm going to use the same table of values that I used last time. Um, they're right here because that's the same original graph. And I'm going to create my new one by inserting my x and y values into the new equation. Now I can see that my y values haven't changed, so they're still gonna be zero, one, two, and three, but it's now my x values that are changing from this expression. So we're gonna go two times the original x, and then I'm gonna add four. So this gives me four, six, 12, and 22. So graphing my new points, I get 4, 0, 6, 1, 12, 2, and 22, 3. So connecting my four points, I get a very horizontally stretched radical graph, which actually is true because the horizontal expansion is by 2, which seems to have stretched out more. And that's the end.